How's it going, everybody? This is the Nitty Gritty. This is a show about wrestling. My name is Chad. With me, as usual, is Leonard. And this week, we are returning to our series we call our Down and Dirty Move Breakdown. And basically, what we do is we take a well-known wrestling maneuver and take all of its variations, and we put them into brackets and have a tournament of sorts where we declare which is the best version of said maneuver. And when we declare it the best version of the maneuver, then that's pretty much set in stone, right, Leonard? Right, that is definitive. And at some point, we're going to do a um, tournament of all of the number one moves that we've, that we've talked about with the move breakdowns and crown the ultimate greatest move ever in professional wrestling. Which we might as well just say now is going to be the back rake, right? I, I was I was going to say shooting star back rake. Yeah, <laughs> I would love to see that. Um, so we are not doing back rakes this week, but uh, we are going to be covering clotheslines. And you know, one one week we should do illegal moves, just anything that's illegal. That's a good idea. That would be fun, actually. Yeah. Um, but yes, clotheslines and or lariats. And uh, before we get to that, uh, so Leonard, when you think of clotheslines, like obviously every wrestler under the sun does a version of a clothesline or a lariat at some point. But when you think of that, who comes to mind first? Well, I think it's a variation on the different types of clotheslines of who you think of. And as we talk about with these different ones, when you say you know, a different a variation. There's a certain guy that's going to be hooked with each variation. I think when I, I initially think of clothesline, what comes to mind is like the ultimate warrior for one. That was his bread and butter move was different versions of a clothesline, you know, standing, running, jumping clothesline, did a lot of different clotheslines. I think of him um, I know we're going to talk about the cactus clothesline done by Cactus Jack. He always comes to mind because of that. Right. Um, another move that we're going to talk about is a short arm clothesline. I always think of Jake Roberts. Sure. Uh, and that's the thing about the clothesline, the, a lot of the different variations that we're going to talk about is similar to the variations on the drop kick that we talked about when we did that move breakdown. Because these are bread and butter like day one wrestling holds like right. you, you put this in the first couple of weeks of wrestling school how to do these moves and but with but the same idea is that because these are so basic anyone can do them and you can put little variations on them and make them a little bit different and make them your own and the clothesline is everything from the first move you do in a match to a finisher and right. that says a lot about um just how important that move is and when we first said hey let's look at clotheslines and it was much with drop kicks the same way was like well is there that many different variations that we can make a, a tournament out of right and when we did i think we've got 16 and there was a few others not on the list i mean i'll just mention a double clothesline where right. a guy hits a dude with both arms isn't on here and um some different variations like uh, the Steiner line, the clothesline from hell, the buckshot lariat, the you know the specific people do aren't on the list. So, the, well, and you see that gets into versions. finishers, kind of. Yeah, like, you know, and it and yeah, we'll so we'll we'll get into this. This is probably more in depth of a discussion than people might think. Yes, um, and I have to say, I definitely learned something with this. Um, but before I, I'll say this, you know, I, one of the first people I think of is JBL, simply because he popularized his finisher in, in a very big way. Um, but I also, oddly enough, think of Bret Hart, um, because in my opinion, Bret Hart was one of the people that really did it the most crisp way that made it look devastating, mm -hmm. but probably wasn't hurting the guy. Um, I mean, a lot of things he did in the ring were crisp and really well done. Leonard, I'm going to, while we're doing the show here, I want you to think about what you would name your version of the clothesline. Okay. Uh, we'll get to that before the end of the show. All right. Give me some time to think about it. Okay. So um, one of the things 
it occurred to me when I was looking at your list and Leonard did a great job of, you know, putting these into brackets, uh, which I very much appreciate. And I was looking at the list and I was like, is there a difference between a clothesline and a lariat? And there is. That, yeah. And that there is. And that is something I never really thought about before. So we'll do a kind of a, a longer definition and then we'll do the short definition that I found which I like the best, but uh, basically the clothesline is a move in which one wrestler runs towards another, extending their arm out from the side of their body and parallel to the ground, hitting the opponent in the neck or chest, knocking them over. In wrestling, a lariat is performed when an attacking wrestler runs toward an opponent and wraps an arm around the opponent's upper chest or neck, forcing them to the ground. It is similar to the clothesline. The difference is that a clothesline, the wrestler's arm is kept straight to their side during the move, while the lariat, the wrestler strikes the opponent with their arm, often in a swinging motion, sometimes dropping face first beside the opponent. And obviously a lariat is often used as finishing maneuvers, while a clothesline is just used as a basic attack. And that's kind of the longer version. But I guess at some point, I don't know what year this is from, but it was on Twitter. A fan asked Samoa Joe this question what's the difference between a clothesline and a lariat and i like his answer the best is he's like mm -hmm. barring a few technicalities basically you run into a clothesline a lariat runs into you yes that that's a very good short definition of of the difference right and uh so yeah so there are probably more versions of this than you'd think as we said there is a difference but they kind of go hand in hand and they often go hand in hand on commentary as well I mean, very rarely will you see somebody stick to a consistency of kind of separating one from the other. They're pretty, a lariat is pretty much, you know, universally referred to as a clothesline these days. Yeah. At least in my opinion, it seems that way. And it's still the same idea of you're using an outstretched arm. It's just right. how you're using that outstretched arm. Right. Exactly. And some things like JBL's clothesline from hell, I think if you analyzed it, is more of a lariat right but the lariat from hell doesn't really have the same ring to it right yeah <laughs> but uh yeah anyway so let's get to the tournament shall we um yes so i will start us off here with bracket one we have a standing clothesline a running clothesline a jumping clothesline and a corner clothesline so the standing and the running clothesline are pretty basic versions of a clothesline mm -hmm. and they're really self-explanatory. The running clothesline, you probably see more. The standing clothesline, you do see from time to time. I want to say it's often, it, not always with bigger guys, but a lot of times with bigger guys. Bigger guys that can really have a strong base and, you know, can execute right. the move really well. Um, yeah, I, I, I want to say earthquake use the standing clothesline a lot just you're like right you know he did it he did it a lot you're right yeah. and he was a former sumo champion so it yeah. makes sense um the jumping clothesline the person that really comes to mind the most with this is the undertaker um mm -hmm. he would do the move a lot and it would always be a highlight of his matches the corner clothesline you would often see the miz doing a corner clothesline and you see roman reigns do it as well um so that is our first bracket. Leonard, if you want to add any thoughts to those or you just want to say your pick. Yeah. The ahead. only thing I would add is that the corner clothes line, what makes that a little bit different is that you're not trying to knock a guy down. You're just trying to squash a guy into the corner. Right. And uh, But my favorite of these four, I'm going to go with the jumping clothes line because these are all sort of your basic clothes line 101s here. But the jumping clothesline has a little hot sauce on it. It's just a little bit more. And a, a cruiserweight looks great doing it because they can get a lot of height on the leap. And if a big guy does it, it just looks great because he's getting off his feet. You know, a bigger guy is leaving his feet to do this. So of these four, my pick would be the jumping clothesline. Yeah, you know what? I can agree with you on this one. I, I don't really have a favorite that like stands out in a really prominent way here. Um, the running clothesline is, like I said, very basic. And this might be, Leonard, the first move breakdown that we do where the basic version of the move is not the one that wins. Yes, I, would, I, I guess that. Mm -hmm. Because this is pro this round, is it's going to get eliminated. So 
Um, so yeah, I would I would say the jumping clothesline simply because it it has the most flair to it. Mm-hmm. No pun intended. Um, but uh, but yeah. So the jumping clothesline will move on. And Leonard, if you would like to read our second bracket, sure. So uh, this is, is kind of 102, taking the clothesline up a little bit. Uh, but we have the short arm clothesline, which I mentioned is probably most identified with Jake Roberts. Uh, it's where you're, it looks like you're going to whip someone into a corner or to the ropes. And instead you pull them into the outstretched arm. Uh, the hooking or takedown clothesline, which is probably most associated with Randy Savage, um, is basically using the clothesline as a sort of a tackle or, or like a collaring tackle uh, takedown. So not only are you knocking the opponent down, but you are, you are going down as well. You're using your momentum to take them down. The rebound clothesline, also known as the boomerang, we talked about when we did our spotlight on Outback Jack. It's basically a clothesline to the back of a person. And I'm going to stop saying the word basically, which I know I think I've said for the last three three <laughs> entries here. Um, and the reason it's called a rebound clothesline is usually you miss from the front and then you bounce off the ropes and you hit them on the way back. And then the three-point stance clothesline Jim Duggan probably most famously does this, but a lot of ex-football players do this because right. you're down in a three-point stance as you would from the start of a football play, you know, on the line, and then you come out of it uh, sort of into a, a bursting run to nail the clothesline. So all three of these, are, are, or four of these, I'm sorry, are all kind of associated specifically with a, 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 cer- a certain wrestler. Uh, but are all you know minor variations on the um, basic version. So I'll let you talk, uh, give your thoughts overall, or which one that you think should move on. Right, and uh, as you were talking about the three point stance uh, from football players, Leonard, why don't you give a brief history of football for it? No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, but yes, in you the are right. Winning, there were no helmets. So. <laughs> yeah, um, you. Yeah, in addition to Duggan, you would see uh, Mongo McMichael do this you would see uh, you know i know ron simmons uh did it once in uh as farouk i think uh or maybe he was right it was just ron simmons at the time in apa but um i remember an exchange between jerry lawler and jim ross uh, that just came to me thinking about this um where uh jim ross who often likes to talk about the football background of talent was mm-hmm. talking about you know uh ron simmons at florida state and uh how legendary a college football player he was and Jerry Lawler said, nobody cares about that. And then immediately following, nobody cares about that. Ron Simmons got down in a three-point stance and, <laughs> uh, and did a clothesline, which was just seemed like a coincidence. So, anywho. Yeah, um, Steve Williams, I think, is another, if you didn't mention, Dr. Death, I think. Absolutely. Also. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you, some of these bigger guys, like I really do think a lot about when it comes to clotheslines, Steve Williams, Vader, a lot of those guys really had great clotheslines. Um <laughs> Uh, you mentioned Jake Roberts with short arm clothesline. Page was also somebody that did the short arm clothesline. Uh, the hooking or takedown clothesline. Now here it's referred to as a clothesline, but a lot of times it's pretty much the lariat version. Yeah. Of the move. And that's like what I talked about with Bret Hart. Bret Hart would do it as well as Randy Savage. They kind of had the same approach uh, with the hooking lariat there, uh, which really always looked really great and uh, crisp to me. Uh, the rebound clothesline. I have to say, when I Googled this, it came all the only gifts that came up were pendulum clothesline gifts. And I was oh. like, what's the difference? Where? You know, so I had to do a little bit more digging to figure out what a rebound clothesline actually was, which is that you just said uh, the Outback Jack uh, clothesline from behind. Um, so I loved the short arm clothesline when I was younger. Jake Roberts setting that up, you know, getting ready for the DDT. It was always really great to see that move but i have to go with the hooking clothesline here simply because i think it looks the most devastating the the three-point stance clothesline is really great all these are good in my opinion the rebound clothesline i don't think you get used as enough used enough these days probably because Mm -hmm. it is a hit to the back of the head but uh I, i have to go with the hooking clothesline here simply because of the talent that made it a regular part of their repertoire short arm and hooking were my one and two here and while i think i lean a little more towards a short arm because of jake roberts 
I'll agree with you and go with the takedown clothesline because I think it's a little more versatile. I think you get more people that use that and all time greats like Savage and Hart, as you mentioned. So I'll agree right. with you on this one. I appreciate that. We're see guys, we're, we're friends, you know, yes. we, yeah, we, we're, we're not out here to argue. <laughs> no. I'm sure if Leonard felt strong enough about the short arm clothesline, he would. I would. And I really don't. Like I said, that was my one and two. And the short arm was maybe because it's, that it's much. not nearly as devastating as the hooking one. To be fair, it's not. Right? It's it not. looks really cool because of what Jake Roberts did. And to be honest, yeah. with you, before researching, I had forgotten that Paige did it. But uh, yeah, I it, forgot till you said it. Right, I forgot till you said it. Yeah, yeah. So so that's a move that I think you associate with one guy. One guy yeah. does it, and it looks cool. And the way Jake, I mean, Jake was so smooth. DDT was smooth. The short arm was smooth. Everything was one motion. Right. Well, bracket three, we have the cactus clothesline, the springboard clothesline, the top rope flying clothesline, and the discus clothesline. So the cactus clothesline obviously is the one that McFoley, Mankind, Cactus Jack, Dude Love would perform in pretty much every match he ever had. Yeah. And it is a move where he's basically clotheslining somebody over the top rope and following them along to the floor or the apron whatever happens to be the place that they land and uh you know it, it really is kind of iconic to him yeah i don't you know, know when, anybody you talk else. about guys who only have like five moves like kevin nash has five moves when cactus jack started out he had five moves yeah like he had the pulling pile driver get double arm ddt he had the cactus clothesline and the nesty plunge. Well, that's only yeah. four. <laughs> and smacking people with like a garbage can. We'll make that five. Yeah. Mandible claw. Well, that's mm. a finishing move, though. Um, but yeah, so Cactus Jack's clothesline is pretty much iconic to him. The springboard clothesline is pretty self-explanatory. It's, you know, kind of clotheslining somebody off of springboarding off the ropes. Um, and the top rope flying clothesline, you know, now when I think of this, I think of Legion of Doom, it's a tag team right. maneuver. Um, obviously many people do it without having a tag team partner. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, the discus clothesline can really look devastating. Um, Natalia, uh, Luke Harper slash Brody Lee are two people that will perform this. And this bracket is not easy for me to decide Leonard. So I'm going to throw it to you before, I give my pick. Okay, yeah, th this is a tough one because they're all, you know, I think the reason I put these all together is because they're all more motion oriented, <laughs> as as it were. the the person The person delivering the clothesline is very much in motion as they're delivering it. Um, yeah, this was a tough one for me too. I think, and I'm willing to hear you debate any of the others with me. But I'm going to go the top rope flying clothesline because, again, I think it's the one of the four that has the most pizzazz. I think it's the one that probably the most people do. And much like we talked about the jumping clothesline is that when a cruiserweight does it, they can get a lot of height, a lot of distance on it. And usually they, they don't because they can do so much more on the top rope. Like you said, it's usually bigger guys like Hawk of the Road Warriors. And when a big guy does it, it looks it looks really devastating having a guy like that come off the top with that. So I, I'm willing to debate on this one because, he's, as you said, this one's tough. But my my lean right now is going to be the top rope flying clothesline. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good one to pick. I, I would say a close second for me might be the discus clothesline, simply because it it just it can it can look so devastating when when somebody does it. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I wish it would more people would do it honestly, but it's kind of like hard to make that a regular part of a move of a match. It, it it's like so the way it looks, it kind of has to be a finisher. Um, but but yeah, no, the top rope flying clothesline is a pretty straightforward but flashy maneuver from the top rope so we can go with that one for sure all right <clears throat> so we have bracket four leonard bracket four so now we're down to the odd variations uh including the lariat um we talked about this to start with there's as many different versions of a lariat as there is a clothesline and we're not going to go all all over those right um, as we mentioned it's kind of a slight variation there's about two differences one is that the arm is in motion it's not stationary and that there's usually 
a little bit of a hook to to the elbow so so there's a bit of a hook to it um i would parallel it the difference between a boxing jab and a boxing hook almost um as we talked about a lot of guys from texas cowboy characters they would use the lariat i think maybe that's where the lariat name comes from um and a lot of times if a clothesline is used as a finisher it's more a lariat uh next is the axe bomber which is a really interesting one to talk about so i believe larry the axe henning created this move but uh it's used a lot in japan and hulk hogan is probably the guy most associated with using the axe bomber so with this the arm is bent at about a 45 degree angle so the forearm is, is vertical, the rest of the arm is horizontal. And so when you hit the guy, you're hitting them at a higher angle with the upper part of your arm. So the forearm is striking the face or forehead of the opponent. And you're knocking them down that way with this part of, of the arm. So again, Hulk Hogan is the main guy you see doing that. Uh, we also have the hammerlock lariat and there's a hammerlock clothesline as well. Um, if I'm saying the name correctly, Aria Davari is most known for using this move. It's basically a variation on a short arm. Um, you've got a guy in a hammer lock, and then you use the hammer lock to pull them into the lariat or the clothesline. And then you have the pendulum, pendulum lariat, which could also be a clothesline. Uh, John Moxley, Nigel McGinnis, uh, Kyle O'Reilly all do this one as examples. One falls into the ropes, goes through the second and top rope bounces off and through the bounce off kind of uses that as the momentum to hit the clary the i almost said clariot I took the clothesline to lariat <laughs> turned them into a clariot we just created uh, a new move new move to 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 hit the to hit the move so those are the four here Benjamin lariat the hammerlock lariat the axe bomber and the regular lariat and i think i know where chad is going here but i'll let you discuss yeah, the uh, the pendulum pendulum lariat is is a cool move to look at. Um, you know, it, it, it I you know it's cool to look at, but I think it's overused sometimes with some of these guys uh, because it often then becomes a spot like the six one nine where it feels like it's being set up for that sometimes. Um, you know, maybe to a lesser extent, but uh, you know, Dean Ambrose, John Moxley, uh, you 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 see him do that all the time. Uh, the Hammerlock Lariat, you know, CM Punk would do this one uh, from time to time as well. And I, I don't know, this is that's not my favorite version of a Lariat or a clothesline. It, it takes a lot of time to produce, you know, to make it look kind of fluid. Um, the Axe Bomber is is a cool one. And it should be known that, you know, this was Hogan's finishing move in Japan. Yeah. Um, which is an interesting footnote. Um, Hogan would have a slightly different style of wrestling when he was in Japan um, because he was in a different area and they had different expectations. Um, the Lariat, you know, as you said, there's so many versions of the Lariat. Stan Hansen, you know, I think is often associated with just the simple version of the Lariat. Yeah, and I think that's why the Lariat name came from since he was using a, a cowboy gimmick. Right. Um, so it's kind of hard for me to vote against the lariat here because there's so much history associated with it and it, it it's such a devastating kind of straightforward maneuver in and of itself so i would vote the lariat here i'm i'm, I'm good with that i figure that's where you would go and that's where i go as well right so that means the semifinals in our tournament we have the jumping clothesline going up against the hooking or take down clothesline. Okay. So, I have a feeling we're not going to agree here. I don't think we. I don't think we are. Um, because I'm going to go jumping. Because I would go jumping clothesline. Um, uh, again, I think it's more versatile. I think more people do it. I think more styles of wrestlers can do it. A bigger guy can do it. A smaller guy can do it. It's that bread and butter move. It's that basic version. And again, it's not the most basic version, but it's a takeoff of the basic version. Right. And I think that makes it important and makes it worthy of being in the finals. And you see, I, I, I want to go with the hooking clothesline, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, what do, I don't know, Leonard, what do we do here? Do we, uh, 
do we enlist somebody to be a tiebreaker? I don't know who we could enlist on, on short notice. Um, you know what? I will be the better, bigger man here. You know what? Do you have Ronnie's number? Is he available? I don't. I, you know what? I would hate to call him at this time of night uh, because he's got kids. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's true. So, so I'm going to, he's got three young kids. So, you know what? I'm going to, I'm just going to say, I'll go with you and say the hooking or cake down clothesline. I'll go with that. But in the future, I'll make sure to have someone like either Ronnie or Dan on speed dial. Yeah. So we can get them as a tiebreaker vote the next time we do one of these move breakdowns. But for this, I'll go with you because I think I know where we're both going in the finals, but I'll go with you on this one. All right. Well, I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, we'll revisit this uh, again in the future. We'll, when, we, when we get somebody on speed dial, we'll find out what they would have picked. Yes. Um, so our next match in the semifinals, we have the top rope flying clothesline going up against the Lariat. So Leonard, take it away. Yeah, you got you got to go Lariat, you know, for all the yeah. reasons that we talked about. And similar to my reasonings for the last round, it's a basic bread and butter move. It's a move that a lot of different people can do. It can be a setup. It can be a transition. It can be a finisher. Uh, it can be just about anything. That top rope flying clothesline is more of, of a pop move, a move to get a pop from a bigger guy. It looks right. cool, sure. But against the Lariat, you know, if you were going to make a list of here's all the positives about the flying clothesline, four or five, maybe four or five. Here's all the positives about Lariat. That would be a way longer list. Right. So I got to go Lariat. Yeah. And as I'm thinking about this, when we do have somebody on speed dial for the jumping clothesline and hooking clothesline debate, it can't mm -hmm. be Dan, because if we ask Dan to pick between those two, he's going to automatically go for the Undertaker's move. So, right. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> Any move we have to go to a neutral party. Run. We're declaring that Dan is not a neutral party for the jumping clothesline. So. Yes, that, that would probably be true. If we asked Dan what the greatest move ever of all time is, he would probably say the old school rope walk. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yes, I'm going to go with the Larry as well. Uh, as cool as the top rope flying clothesline can be, I, I do think compared to the Larry, it is somewhat old school. There's so much more that guys are doing on the ropes now that you really don't see the simple moves as much anymore like that one. Um, so I'm going to go with the Lariat here. And that would mean that our finals, we have the hooking or takedown clothesline up against the Lariat. So Leonard, I am once again going to throw it to you. What okay. is your opinion? What is the top version of this move? Okay, so this is why I wasn't that keen on fighting between – <laughs> the jumping clothesline, the hooking clothesline, because I knew I was going with Lariat. I knew you were going to go with Lariat to get in the finals. I'm going with Lariat here. Again, we talk about usually in the other move breakdowns we've done, the basic version of the move has won or it's been in the finals. And we talked about the differences between a Lariat and a clothesline. There are subtle ones, very important subtle ones. Um, but the Lariat is a basic version of a clothesline. Again, we talk about you can do it so many different ways, so many different types of people, uh, so many different points in the match. There's just so much going on here. And if you want to argue for the takedown clothesline, I would love to hear that argument because I, I don't see how you can make a very valid argument to want to put that over a lariat. Well, I'm actually going to bring back the hammerlock lariat and declare it the champ. No. Um, <laughs> No, yeah, you have to go with the lariat here. Um, it, it, it's a, it's, it's still a devastating move today when it's performed in the right way, and it, it's, it's still, it has not lost its luster. Whether it's used as finisher or a simple part of the match, um, it's, it's always devastating. You know, if the guy does it right and if the opponent bumps in the right way, then it can look really, really great each time. And uh, so, yeah, so that would mean that the Lariat is the ultimate version of our clothesline down and dirty move breakdown. Leonard, are you satisfied with the results? My pick was Lariat from the very beginning. After I formed the brackets and took a look, um, 
I figured the Lariat would win. And actually the final four was pretty, pretty close to what I thought it would be. I was very uh, tight on either it being the short arm or the takedown from bracket two. Right. So I think, again, we talk about maybe, you know, maybe we should argue more and that will get more people to watch the show. Because when we <laughs> agree, it's maybe not as interesting. But I think our sensibilities are the same. Yeah. And I think we understand what works and what doesn't. And again, I wasn't going to fight over any specific move too much because I knew Larry was going wire to wire. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's your UNC. It's your Duke basketball. It's it's always going to be at the top and a, and a good bet to win. So very, very true. And uh, we probably should argue more, but Hey, what, we what, need to find something. We, we, we need to maybe do a week. I don't know how we would figure this out. Like stuff we disagree on <laughs> like a wrestler or a match or a move, like something you love and I hate, or I hate and you love and just go and just go at it. I don't know. I don't know how we could figure that out. What's funny about this is that back when we did the four one one movies podcast uh, with you know a bunch of other guys, yeah, I was adamantly trying to find stuff that would induce incite conflict. Like I, I really, really was. And I think back at that now, and I think God, you know, you know, those. I wonder how many of those guys thought I was being a jerk. You know, because like I would do the franchise debates and, you know, just different things um, like that, because I, I thought conflict would equal more ears listening to the mm -hmm. podcast. Uh, but I've mellowed over the years. So but yeah, we will find something. We'll stumble upon something that you feel strongly about that I don't or vice versa. Yeah, and we'll, we'll certainly cover it here. Um, so that'll be fun. But inquiring minds want to know, Leonard. Mm -hmm. what is the name of your clothesline have you thought yeah. of one? i got two and I'll, I'll i'll let you pick which one you like best it could either be the leo line <laughs> or the clothesline from columbus <laughs> i like the leo line the leo line the leo line yeah um so it would be like a steiner line but i'm doing it i, I like that uh, if i were picking one and i don't know how this is associated with my name or me in any way but I thought of the chariot lariat. I, I don't know. I just like the ring of that. Maybe it's like a, a double, you know, hooking. A double lariat? Yeah, like a double thing where it like looks like the, uh, you know, the shape of a chariot. I, I don't know. But uh, maybe maybe you could use Farouk, the old Farouk gimmick and, <laughs> and get like the, you know, the Roman gladiator helmet and, yeah. and, and stuff. That's a good idea. Yeah. That's a good piece of memorabilia you have. I'm sure, I'm sure one of the people on that, uh, on that show that they did hidden treasures i'm sure somebody has farouk's helmet out there how about this i'll throw this out as a possible future um topic could even be next time uh how about we make a list we can keep it to five each our top five most wanted wrestling memorabilia items that's a good not, idea not we like a not like a t-shirt or a hat or anything like that unless it would be something specifically worn or specifically from a from a wrestler so right right yeah so like game game used as it was like like, like if you were to pick outback jack's hat <laughs> yes that would count that would, that would count, count. <laughs> yes if it was his actual hat that i really made. hope that's not on your list by the way it is it is not on my list I, i'd have to set down i know uh well again we'll get into i shouldn't start talking about it now we'll talk about it when we get into it yeah but uh you know there's a few there's a few things i'll probably make up like a list of five and maybe a couple honorable mentions but yeah maybe we'll do that next time absolutely we'll we'll, we'll look into that for next time and i also definitely want to do the illegal moves tournament at some point i think yes. that'll be fun and uh, we talked about rebooking WrestleMania 17 to make I it was, the worst i was gonna possible. say i was gonna say after after we cut feed here I was going to say, I absolutely want to do that because I've already started to research bad Vince Russo ideas. Oh, so, fantastic. So it'll be, that'll be a lot of fun. Hey, and, viewers slash listeners, there's three cool ideas that you've got to look forward to in the future. So you better be back for them. Absolutely. Ronnie, our listener. Um, yes. <laughs> we love you. We love you, Ronnie. And it's not to, so he knows we're recording this about 10 o'clock at night. 
Yeah. And I know he's in bed. I know he is because he works early and he's, like I said, he's got three young kids. That's fair. That's fair. Um, we wouldn't want to wake Ronnie up. Mm-hmm. So on that note, uh, please check us out on Apple Podcasts or Spotify if you'd rather listen to us. Uh, give us a five-star review there. Uh, click the like button on this YouTube video. Subscribe to our channel. Uh, for Leonard, my name is Chad. We will see you next week. And Alexa, we'll see you out.